Hey guys, this is yours truly, Kevin Grace. I'm here in uh, Newark, New Jersey at Glendale Cemetery and paying my respects to a former Negro League baseball player that was inducted into the Major League Hall of Fame in 2006. He died in 1966, age 65, but uh, he was uh, one of the um, several baseball players that they did a special um, induction at the Baseball Hall of Fame in New York and he was among them. His name, George Suttles and his nickname is the mule. He was um, known for his power. He was a first baseman and a and an outfielder and uh, he died in 1966 but uh, he is buried here. If you ever hear at Glendale Cemetery come out and pay your respects to George Mule Suttles. Also buried here is Sarah Vaughn as, as well. Born at the turn of the 20th century in Blockton, George Mule Suttles dreamed one day he would be good enough to play pro baseball. During those Jim Crow days, the opportunity to play in the major leagues wasn't an option, but a man of immense talents could display his skills in the Negro Leagues, and that is just what Suttles did. Standing six foot six and weighing a robust 260 pounds, Suttles played mainly as a first baseman and outfielder for the Birmingham Black Barons, St. Louis Stars, and Newark Eagles. Renowned for hitting with power, his career peaked during the 1926 to 1930 seasons when he was a member of the St. Louis Stars. Twice he led the Negro National League in homers, doubles, and batting average. During those five years, he was an all-star each year and compiled a batting average of 412 in the East-West All-Star Games. Tales are plentiful about this gigantic Suttles using a 50-ounce bat and blasting 500-foot home runs. In one game against the Memphis Red Sox, Suttles accomplished a feat that has never been duplicated. He hit three home runs in one inning. His tape measure home run in Havana, Cuba's Tropicana Park flew over a 60-foot high center field fence and landed in the ocean. It was such a legendary blast that it is still a part of Cuban baseball folklore. It was because of subtle strength that he got his nickname, and late in games, when a big hit was needed, his teammates would encourage him with cries of, Kick Mule. Suttles' final seasons were spent playing first base for the Newark Eagles, a team he would also manage. Settling in Newark after his career ended, Suttles died of cancer in 1966 at the age of 66 and some 40 years before he would be inducted in Cooperstown. Tonight he joins his state's elite as a member of the State of Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. George Mule Suttles was a power hitting first baseman in the Negro Baseball League. Born on March 31st, 1901 to James Suttles, a laborer in the coal mines and early Griffin Suttles, occupation unknown, in Blockton, Alabama. Mr. Suttles worked in the coal mines during his teenage years. Called Mule as a term of endearment for being as strong as a mule and his ability to carry a team, Mr. Suttles packed power in his 50 ounce bat extremely popular with the fans for hitting booming home runs and the fans will yell kick mule kick and that was chanted as mr subtle stepped up to the plate how cool would that be if a whole stadium was yelling your name and saying kick mule kick that's pretty cool that's that's really cool and he had a 50 ounce bat that's a log that's probably why he was hitting so many home runs if you can get that bat around that ball's gonna go definitely gonna go mr Suttles began with the independent negro league in 1921 playing with the atlantic city baccarat giants at the age of 20. his negro baseball league debut came in 1923 playing both first base and outfield with the birmingham black barons for three seasons mr Suttles then played with the st louis star 
All-Stars in 1926 to 1931, leading the league with 11 stolen bases, 19 triples, and 26 homers. He won Negro National League championships with them in 1928, 1930, and 1931. So Mr. Suttles was a power hitter and they built the team around him and everywhere he went, he ended up winning. His career included playing with the Chicago American Giants, Detroit Wolves, and Washington Pilots. Named to the East-West All-Star Game five times, Mr. Suttles hit the first home run in the game's history in 1933. Mr. Suttles led the league in home runs twice and on August 11, 1935, during the East-West All-Star Game at Comiskey Park, he struck out once, drew four walks, and with the score tied in the bottom of the 11th inning with two men on base, drilled a home run over the right center field fence, giving the West an 11-8 triumph. Mr. Suttles later played with the Newark Eagles and New York Black Yankees. Although sources vary, Mr. Suttles is credited with 237 lifetime NBL homers. So he bashed balls, bashed balls, 237 homers, and that's only the ones that are credited. That could be more. Retiring from playing in the NBL at the age of 42, Mr. Suttles continued with the Newark Eagles as a manager from 1943 to 1944. He managed a Newark, New Jersey bar in 1945 and Newark Buffalo semi-pro team in 1946. He coached the New York Black Yankees of Rochester, New York in 1948 and umpired the East-West All-Star Game at Comiskey Park on August 22nd of the same year. I still think it's pretty cool that they had the New York Black Yankees in Rochester, New York, and I played at the same stadium, from what I hear, the same stadium today. So I think that's really cool. In February 1949, 47-year-old Mr. Suttles married 42-year-old Lil Cell Childs of New York. Prevented by segregation from making a name for himself in Major League Baseball, Mr. Suttles was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York in 2006. George Mule Suttles died of cancer on July 9, 1966 in Newark, New Jersey at the age of 65. His former NBL teammate served as pallbearers. He was survived by his wife and no children. So there you have it. You have the story of Mr. Suttles, who was a power hitter in the Negro Leagues and was a very sought after player, a player that people built the team around, a player that was very popular amongst the fans. He had his own chant as he walked up to the plate.